Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if I can talk about delusions of misidentification. So I'll cover quite a few here in this video, including mirror self misidentification, Frigoli delusions, intermetamorphosis, Cotard delusions, Copras delusions, and several others. So a delusion is a fixed false belief that is resistant to counter evidence. Delusions are associated with a number of mental disorders, including schizophrenia, delusional disorder, and major mood disorders. Delusions not only have this association to disorders related to mental health, but also disorders related to physical health, like brain tumors, dementia, vascular diseases, and infectious diseases. Delusions take many forms. For example, we see persecutory, where somebody believes that somebody's out to get them, grandiose, where somebody believes they're great, like much greater than somebody might ordinarily believe. They might believe that they're a famous actor or a politician when they're not. We see delusions like erotomanic, where somebody believes that usually somebody famous is in love with them when they're not. So these are fairly common delusion types. We see one particularly rare type of delusion, and that is a delusion of misidentification. These delusions are most frequently associated with schizophrenia and dementia. This type of delusion involves an incorrect belief about the identity of other people, oneself, animals, objects, or places. In theory, misidentification delusions share two common elements, a misidentified entity and an incorrect belief about the identity of the entity. Now, this type of delusion can take on many forms. I'll go through several here. The examples I'll use are from the research literature. I'll put all the references I used in the description for this video. So the first type of misidentification delusion is mirrored self misidentification. Now here we see that when somebody looks in the mirror, they fail to recognize their reflection. They may think that the person in the mirror is somebody else, or they may not recognize them at all. So I'll give an example of each. So we see a 62 year old female who believes that her reflection was her sister who died two years earlier. And we see a 77 year old male who believed his reflection was a dead ringer for himself, but he did not know the identity of the person in the mirror. So with these delusions, the person may be distressed by the stranger, like who is this person who keeps popping up around my house or in different places, or they may not care. They may treat the stranger like their friend. The next type is the Frigoli delusion. This is when somebody believes that a person who they do not know, a stranger, is in fact a known person wearing a disguise. This delusion is often accompanied by persecutory and paranoid components. An example here, a 27 year old female believes that two actresses were following her in different disguises while taking the form of people that she knows. These actresses disguise themselves as friends, previous employers, and strangers on the street. Eventually, this client attacked a stranger on the street who she believed was one of these actresses. So there is an element of risk with some of these delusions. Moving on to the next type, this is intermetamorphosis. This is a belief that an individual has been transformed internally and externally into another person. So the original person is gone. There is also a reverse intermetamorphosis. So the person believes that they have themselves transformed into somebody else. So an example here of the reverse intermetamorphosis. A 40 year old female with schizophrenia believed that she was her father and on occasion she believed that she was her grandfather. When she was asked questions about her history, she would report her father's history. She would only respond to his name and would only sign his name. There are a few variants to this particular delusion. One is that a person could believe that one's mind is in another person's body. Therefore, they would not recognize their physical body as their own. Another variant is called lycanthropy. So here with lycanthropy, someone believes they are transformed into an animal. Most of the time, the animal is a wolf or werewolf, but there have been reports of other animals like birds, cats, lions, tigers, sharks, rabbits, and dogs. Some people with this delusion will talk and others will adopt the behavior of the animal. For example, we see a 66 year old female who had psychotic depression, 
who would get down on her hands and knees and bark. The next delusion type is reduplicative paramnesia. This is a belief that a person, place, or object has been duplicated. So with this delusion, there is no sense that the duplicate is an imposter. There is simply a copy of the person roaming around and interacting with various people, working, living life. It's not unusual that people with this delusion also believe that places and objects have been duplicated. This one is often associated with dementia or brain injury. An example of this delusion, we see a 76-year-old female who believes there are two versions of her husband. Now, her husband is in fact dead, and she correctly reported this, so she knew that he had died, but she believed that there was a duplicate of him and that he was a patient in the same hospital where she was. This client also believed that many of her other family members had duplicates. She offered no explanation of how this was possible, but she was certain in her convictions. The next type is subjective doubles. This is where the person with the delusion believes that there is a copy of them going about their business in the world, functioning independently. This is typically thought of as a physical copy, like another person with the same body, but there's also a psychological double that's possible here. So the other person has a mind identical to the client's mind. An example of this delusion, we see an 18-year-old female who believed that two other female clients and a neighbor had the ability to transform themselves into her doubles. The doubles had the same build, the same clothes, the same face, and would use a wig, a mask, and special makeup to achieve a convincing transformation. Eventually, this client attacked one of the other clients who was impersonating her. As the staff was pulling her off the victim, she begged them to pull the mask. The next type here is the Qatar delusion. Here, the person believes that they are dead or that they lack internal organs. Now, this is interesting for a variety of reasons, but one reason that really stands out is this delusion doesn't actually involve misidentification. Remember, there are two components to a misidentification delusion, a misidentified entity and the incorrect belief. Here we only see the assignment of an incorrect property to a correctly identified entity. The person still knows who they are. They just believe that they're dead. Now, the next two delusions, the phantom border and the sex change delusion, have the same problem. They're really not delusions of misidentification, but that's how they are sometimes identified. So really, it's a bit ironic to misidentify delusions of misidentification, right? But this does happen quite a bit. So the phantom border delusion is when somebody believes that there are uninvited strangers living in their residence. Now, with the sex change delusion, typically the way this one is expressed is we would see someone who believes that nefarious operators have changed them from female to male or male to female, like surgeons who are in a conspiracy with the person's parents. That one typically follows that pattern. The next type of delusion is the copras delusion. And this is actually one of the more common delusions of misidentification. This is when somebody misidentifies other people. Typically, a person with this delusion misidentifies people who are close to them. For example, we often see situations where one spouse believes that the other spouse has been taken over by an imposter. In most cases, multiple people are thought to be imposters, but somebody can have this delusion where there's only one misidentification. The incorrect identification that happens with a copper's delusion can take two forms. The first one is referred to as misidentification. So an example here, a wife looks at her husband, somebody who in theory she's familiar with, and says that he is not her husband. She believes he's a stranger. The second is referred to as replacement. So using the same example with the wife who has the disorder and misidentifies her husband, she would believe in a number of possible identities regarding her husband. So I'll go through these. First, the replacement is an imposter. So she believes that her husband is not actually her husband, but a person who is pretending to be her husband. And this imposter knows what he's doing. The imposter has insight. The second possibility, the replacement is a clone. So this clone may not realize that he's a clone. He may actually believe that he is the husband. So the replacement could be a victim in this whole situation. He's being tricked just like everyone else. Third possibility, the replacement is an alien and he is there to disguise the fact that the husband has been taken away by the other aliens. The fourth possibility, the replacement is a robot. This robot may or may not have bad intentions. 
so may or may not be aware of the fact that he is a robot. Now, there are some other possibilities as well, but these are the four common ones that we see. Imposter, clone, alien, and robot. It's not unusual in cases of the Copper's delusion that the individual who has the delusion will believe that they are noticing some small difference in the people, and this allows them to identify who the real imposters are. For example, we see this case of a 53-year-old woman with schizophrenia who believed that her neighbor, children, husband, and the police chief had been replaced with visually similar imposters. She could figure out who the imposters were because they had a thinner face, a different way of speaking, a different way of walking, and a little mark on the ear. Another interesting aspect with this delusion is that sometimes it can occur exclusively in the visual modality. For example, going back to the wife who believes that her husband is an imposter. When she looks at him, she doesn't recognize him. But if he talks, she may recognize his voice. So she may believe he is an imposter when seeing him in person, but not when talking to him over the phone. So how do we explain these delusions? Where did they come from? There are many theories, and really none of them are particularly satisfying. We really don't know a lot about these delusions. I will briefly review three theories specifically behind the Copras delusion. We see the psychodynamic theory. This suggests that the delusions come from conflicted feelings toward the person who is thought to be replaced by the imposter. Another theory suggests that the individual has lost facial recognition ability, and they've lost their memory for faces. Now, some people with this delusion do have deficits in facial recognition, and they do have impaired memories, but many do not. We see many examples of people who have the delusion but still recognize most of the faces that they see in their daily life without any difficulty. So this theory really has a problem. Why would somebody with a delusion believe that a few people in their life have been replaced by an imposter, but they recognize everyone else? This brings me to the third theory. Even though visual face recognition may not be impaired, there could be a problem in the affective route to face recognition. So cognitively, somebody might be able to recognize another's face, but the emotion is not there. And this disrupts the sense of familiarity that would normally occur from seeing a friendly face. With this absence of a sense of familiarity, people start to develop a delusion that explains why they're not feeling the way they would normally feel when they see a person who would normally be familiar to them. So as we can see, these are interesting theories, but we really don't have a good explanation for the delusions. And because they are relatively rare, there's little research conducted on this topic. So those are some misidentification delusions and some examples for some of them. This is an interesting area of study because we have, again, both mental health and physical health factors, and sometimes it's hard to figure out which ones are actually leading to the delusion. It's important to note that often when we see these delusions, there are other delusions that are present at the same time and other mental health factors could be going on, like depression, anxiety, and substance use. Now, I know when I talk about topics like misidentification delusions, there will be a variety of opinions. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.